Welcome to Peace Baptist Church. Here are your announcements. The Adult Upper Sanctuary Sunday School is now virtual. Classes will be held every Sunday from 9 to 9.45 a.m. The Zoom link can be found on our website. We will have Children's Church at 11.30 a.m. next week. Children's Church will take place on the second and fourth Sundays of the month via Zoom. When it comes to your final arrangements, shouldn't you make the decisions? Join us for our pre-arrangement seminar this Friday at 7.30 p.m. The arrangements you make will reflect your wishes and desires. It will also help ease the burden of your loved ones. Visit our website or Facebook page for more information. You're invited to Living with Faith Through a Crisis, an intimate conversation with our pastor and first lady. Please join us on Friday, December 18th. More information to come. Did you download the Givelify app yet? Remember, all you have to do is search for Peace Baptist Church. You can pay tithes, offering, or select a designation. Don't wait. Make your life simple and try it out today. For all of our events and more information, please visit our website at pbc712.org. You may view our calendar or announcements to learn more. Thank you for joining us online. We hope that you and your families are staying safe. Spread the love and see you soon. Good morning and welcome to Kitty Corner. It's a special time during service where we have a short lesson just for the young people in the group. You older ones may not be interested but we encourage you to stick around, for you too may learn something. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. Miss Crystal and myself, Cynthia Parker, will be doing these segments. Stay tuned. Good morning and welcome to Kitty Corner. You look around, you see that fall is in bloom. Pumpkins and arms and even scarecrow. This reminds me of a holiday that's coming up, and that's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the time where we have lots to eat. We have turkey and ham and stuffings and all kinds of dessert, and all our family and friends come over. But it's also a time to remember not everyone had plenty to eat or have friends around. I remember a story in the Bible. It's in 1 Kings. 17 and it talks about Elijah a prophet he's a man of God he went to a small town and there he saw a widow a widow is a lady that was married but her husband died and he asked the widow for a drink of water and she gave it to him and then he asked the widow for food she was really sad because she said I only have enough food for my son and I and the prophet told her, don't be afraid to do what I ask. Give me some food first and then make some food for you and your son. So the widow went and she made food for the prophet and gave it to him. And then she made food for her son and herself. A miracle happened. From that day on, she had lots of food for her and her son. God blessed her because she did what the man of God asked her to do. We have to remember to do what God asked us to do. During this time of Thanksgiving, when we have plenty, we have to remember to give to people who don't have the homeless and those who are hungry. Scripture comes from Psalms 107, eight and nine. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for everything that you bless us with. Help us, Lord, to remember those who don't have any during this Thanksgiving time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, see you next time. Remember, God loves you and I do too. Bye-bye.
Good morning, Cyber Sanctuary members. First, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, I give reverence to our senior serving shepherd, Reverend Dr. Michael T. Bell, for his awesome leadership and the opportunity to stand before you today. And thirdly, I give thanks to our Peace Baptist Diaconate membership and friends. To God be the glory. There is one verse of scripture I would like to raise in your hearing to center our thoughts for today. Or you've heard it before, and I must warn you, on the outset of this delivery that I'm excited, yeah, excited about its significance in such a time as this. I sincerely pray that the author's advice will resonate with you as well and help all of us find hope from our experiences. Why? Because our current worldviews are derived from the plethora, the overabundance of things we already witnessed. The text in Psalms 37:25 simply says, I was young, you know this one, right? And now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, abandoned, nor his seed children begging for bread. My subject, a God for my weary years. My brothers and sisters, we find ourselves in a captivated society. To paraphrase the Philadelphia City Republican Commissioner Al Schmidt, there's a population hungry to consume lives. As such, there is no doubt that as we sit harbored in the confines of our homes, bombarded by CNN, Fox, MSNBC, we have a claustrophobic view of the enemy. Our sight of victory can be sometimes blinded, our range of possibilities narrowed, and the truth as we acknowledge it may seem diminished. But I enlist you this day to count your own triumphs, refocus your agonies, and see that when you tally up God's deliverances, the map really does line up. This chapter starts with David's charge to community. Don't fret about evil folks. Don't even worry about what they have attained, but trust in the Lord. Now, my brothers and sisters, if you are as radical as I am, tilt your head to the side, snap your fingers and stare back through time and say, David, hold that thought. You see, in the last 20 years alone, the world has been shocked by economic polarization, social separation, political divide and cultural misinterpretation. If the truth be told, we have endured centuries of the false misrepresentation of freedom. Bound in chains to a native land stolen, castrated unjustly, renamed for convenience, raped for pleasure, and segregated for profit. And you say, what, David? Yet, my brothers and sisters, the operative words of the text are, fret not, no matter what's happening. The advice directed to a certain class is predicated on a source much higher and much powerful than the circumstances and the conditions of impact. It is this kind of belief, trust, and certainty that surrounded that ring circle and that faith which was raised from the wash pot songs of ancestral slavery, who as they endured bondage still kept singing loudly, swing low, sweet chariot. And how their future generations, even now under religious oppression, could still refrain melodiously how I got over, how I got over my soul, or oh, you know, looks back and wonder, 
how I got over. It is proofing this concept of not worry that draws me to the overriding principle of the 24th verse. To distinguish the false prosperity of the wicked from the real prosperity of those who abide in the truth of a concerned God. You see, the entire narrative of chapter 37 focuses on the stark contrast between perception and knowing, and knowing through experience. The text illustrates our natural tendencies to align benefit to fortune, but steers us to see and highlight the sacred signs of comfort afforded to the upright even in the midst of their pain and contrast. In other words, I know what you think you see, but those that fear the Lord have no doubt when they see through spiritual insight. Howard Thurman quoted eloquently while stating the impact of the Negro spirituals on theology. He was a God, as Thurman shares, who was a companion to them in their miseries, even as he enabled them to transcend their miseries. In the text, the psalmist raises the compelling thesis that the vast wealth of the wicked cannot be compared to the righteous status of those that are labeled as have-nots. You see, whereas the form is temporary, God is both present and will be generationally faithful to the upright. Oh, I could stop right there and praise him, but we must move on. You see, this chapter composes a litany of superficial prestige, such as prosperity, political influence, selfishness, and vindictiveness in juxtaposition with those that are poor, needy, meek, and good. Look, but I need not give you a historical lesson of biblical proportion. If you have never sat in the rocking chair of feeling shamed or shafted, defamed or denied, betrayed or belittled, worthless and undeserved, just because of who you are and what you are or where you live, I am so happy for you. If that be you, please tolerate this pondering for a moment and let me help somebody who may identify, may relate in this day to the lyrical prose of the psalmist. You see, with so many of us dying, with so many of us struggling, with so many of us internally and externally experiencing tension from being torn down one buttonhole at a time. While some endure sleepless nights praying and waiting for the deliverance from the subjugation of unjust reasoning. While some keep trusting when trusting in God in such a time as this is so questionable. And as one author puts it, when we must endure the tensions between the realities of life's experiences and God's proclaimed intentions towards the righteous. With a world that seems it doesn't give a hoot, go ahead, you fill in your own word, about the personal investments you and I have made with money we did not have just to get ahead, just to stay ahead, and just to leave an inheritance of the same to those that we love, while we sit in a world which challenges decent morals honesty, dignity, and respect, and a lack of a God they cannot see. And when every measurement of success seems to outweigh those of the God-fearing, the banner-waving, Bible-toting Christian, but not only that, when evolution went from freedom to slavery, to Jim Crow, to economic depression and more, with all this mess, the psalmist and I choose not to be consumed with what's happening with the wicked, the demise of the wicked, the self-termination of the evil, 
or the real unfortunate picture that's painted in this pericope. No, instead, we search our hearts and know in our spirit that peace prevails when we believe that a resolute God will render evil powerless at some point, at any point on our journey. And we can dwell in this fidelity that what God sees in private, he will acclaim in public and he will reward justly. You can find that in verse five, verse six and verse 10. But the relative question is, how do we hold on to this truth in such a fake and damaging space? In a Christian model which touts there's a bright side somewhere, but I can't find it on the map. It's hidden if I want to rejoice and have joy. In a dominant theology which magnifies suffering, grieving, feeling pain with little joy in this life. You know, just wait. Heaven is coming by and by when the morning, when is morning come? How do I hold on? Well, the writer invites us to be a witness to his years of experience. He invites us to see his journey of woes, his run-in with those who intentionally sabotage his victories, denigrates his status and bursts every bubble of hope. But that might be too old of a story. Well, Natasha White and Quincy Jones tells us how they taught their perfectly healthy five-year-old Tegan to be careful and wear a mask in public all the time. But she died within 15 hours of being diagnosed with COVID-19. After she was sent home to treat it as a common virus because children aren't impacted that much. Yet in the midst of devastating grief, not understanding why, less than five days after burying their daughter, resigned themselves to shedding light and spreading the word so others don't have to share the same experience. That experience where there's little emphasis shown for their importance, their treatment, their concerns. Sitting in all that devastation, reaching deep within bearing the burden of responsibility to inform both the instances of antiquity, weary years of the soul, and the relevance of that present context, silent tears of the spirit, are examples of well-worn calls for insight beyond the sideline images of life. I virtually dropped in your space today to tell you that in the midst of your struggles, Place your hopes on what you know you've already seen. You see, proof positive religion has always been elusive. Some just do not get it, will always debate it, and will not ever recognize it. And the challenge is even greater in these turbulent times. But let the record show for each of us under the standard of Christ. There is nothing clearer than what you see in the Lord. You see, the truth is in our witness. Time and time again, he has lifted us up. Okay, come on, count it up. You've been sick, yes? Despondent, yes? Discriminated against, yes? Alienated, yes? Humiliated, yes? Illegally mentally deported, uh-huh? For doing the right thing, right? Yes. But even in our moments, yet convicted and confronted by the word, Isaiah 51 and 10 says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen and keep you. I will uphold you with the righteousness right hand. Wait a minute. Hold up the right hand. <laughs> the hand of authority, the hand of power, the hand that exalts, the hand where Jesus sits, the hand where God sits until the Lord, the enemy shows my enemies to be my footstools. But look, Matthew and Psalm both say the same right hand 
that when he died, the father set the son there. Shut the door, somebody. My brothers and sisters, no matter what we are going through, no matter what is done to us, we are encouraged to open our eyes and see our value in God. Oh, misery is bound to come. Don't get me wrong. But when it does, I need you to see his right hand. You see, pulling you out of every situation with you at every obstacle, protecting you from behind, leading you in spite of, guarding you on each side and intervening for you out of nowhere to somewhere with his right hand. <laughs> Look, some cultures today prefer to eat with their right hand because it is considered the clean hand. Yeah, I, I don't want to stretch the reality, but my imaginary thought, the imagery of mine, there have been times in my stress with the dirtiness and the mud thrown my way. I have seen that holy, clean hand and realized in all the things I've been through, I still had joy in the hope of redemption. <laughs> Listen, last month, I had significant irregularity in my sight. And for a person with one functional eye, it is always a major concern. Pressure proved to be higher than anticipated, to which the doctor gave me drops to, to help level it out and, and set an appointment for next month to see the results. His comment was, we need to figure out why, because continued pressure could damage the eye and you could lose what little peripheral, you know, that side and light vision you have. So I came home and informed Pastor Bell to which he always lovingly is concerned about me. And after a discourse, I then told him, well, I could not see much out that eye anyway. But what the doctor did say was that my normal vision had not changed much in spite of this complication. I say this to say that if you like me, and you've been on this planet just a little while, turn around and tell somebody, oh, okay, you're home all by yourself. Point to yourself and say, don't be distracted by the sideline observers in your life. <laughs> they don't mean much anyway. Stay focused with the normal assurance of our salvation, which has proven itself time and time again. Keep seeing what the Lord has already done on your journey. I, I know we may not be able to fully explain it. We may not be able to articulate it well enough for others to understand it. But if our testimony is that of the writer, then the consequence of our truth is visual in our response. That any time we felt like nobody knows the trouble I've seen, like sometimes I feel like a motherless child. And every time we lost it, we still felt comfort in his presence. Okay, to feel it. <laughs> and let me talk about me because this may not be your story, but even when I felt sorry for myself, took a step and stumbled, Verse 24 resonates with me because when I stumbled, I did not fall because he held my hand. You see, the psalmist follows up later on in Psalms 94 and says, when I thought when my foot slipped, your steadfast love, O oh Lord, held me up. And the cares of my heart and many your consolations cheered my soul. My brothers and sisters, can't you see it? In my hand, in God's hand, gives you power to run, turns the tides for you, even when the chains aren't broken, but your dreams will be fulfilled. Oh, and then the songwriter said, when I 
see Jesus. Amen. Now look, we may not be in the physical uh, the sanctuary, but this is my house and this is my space. And I feel like praising him for being with me every step of the way. Somebody ought to feel the presence of the Lord and praise him for his love during them wet periods of your life when you thought you could not make it. Don't agonize over the struggle and the hassle. The Lord is good. And you will live to see his promise. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. And then the next generation shall see, shall realize and be granted and will possess the land. Why? How do you know? Because seeing is believing and I've never seen the righteous forsaken and is seen begging bread. Amen. God, we thank you for your goodness, your tender mercies, and your, uh, <laughs> I'm feeling good in my spirit right now because through the storms of life, my soul keeps singing, I'm saved. And your right hand, has picked me up out the miry clay and set me on a rock to stay. And no matter if the hell hounds come my way, you are there. So we thank you as we reach out into the cyber sanctuary and ask you to pour out your blessings that people will not have the room to receive it. And for that, we say thank you and we go to table. For the institution of the Lord's Supper is one that draws us closer to Calvary. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and said, take, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do, in remembrance of me. Shall we eat together? <laughs> I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I pray. And when he had given thanks, and he, he looked around and he said, it, in the same manner, he also took the cup. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Somebody praise him. After supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament. Do y'all know what covenant is? Covenant is a contract, a covenant in my blood. Oh, the blood. <laughs> this do. As oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me, shall we drink together? For as often as you eat of this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes songwriter says i got to tell somebody <laughs> then another songwriter said you can't tell it let me tell it what the lord has done for me god bless you see you next week I am without one plea, but Jesus shed his blood for me, and it me from, oh, Lamb of God. Just as I am, 
Welcome to Peace Baptist Church. Here are your announcements. The Adult Upper Sanctuary Sunday School is now virtual. Classes will be held every Sunday from 9 to 9.45 a.m. The Zoom link can be found on our website. We will have Children's Church at 11.30 a.m. next week. Children's Church will take place on the second and fourth Sundays of the month via Zoom. When it comes to your final arrangements, Shouldn't you make the decisions? Join us for our pre-arrangement seminar this Friday at 7.30 p.m. The arrangements you make will reflect your wishes and desires. It will also help ease the burden of your loved ones. Visit our website or Facebook page for more information. You're invited to Living with Faith Through a Crisis, an intimate conversation with our pastor and first lady. Please join us on Friday, December 18th more information to come. Did you download the Givelify app yet? Remember, all you have to do is search for Peace Baptist Church. You can pay tithes, offering, or select a designation. Don't wait. Make your life simple and try it out today. For all of our events and more information, please visit our website at pbc712.org. You may view our calendar or announcements to learn more. Thank you for joining us online. We hope that you and your families are staying safe. Spread the love and see you soon.